After gathering this morning to share in the shoot first, we call upon the Lord's mercy when we ask God for the healing that we need. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our own sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the heavens. Amen. Amen.
second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometime between the year that I was in kindergarten and first grade, I can't remember which, my teacher sent home a note to my parents. I'm pretty sure it was in first grade. And the, the note was basically something of the gist that said I was having difficulty talking in class. Some of you might find that hard to believe. <laughs> But I wasn't enunciating my words properly, and I kind of mumbled a little bit, and the teacher was concerned that perhaps I had a speech impediment or some sort of speech pathology. And so she informed my parents. What we found out was that it wasn't simply my speech, but in fact my hearing and my speech combined. Fluid had been building up behind or in my ear for a number of years at that point, and I had heard the world differently than most people. And so when I thought I was pronouncing words correctly, I in fact was not. I had an operation of my ergotomy, they drained the, the fluid out of my ears, but in fact, even today, my ears are oddly developed, apparently. There was scar tissue on my inner ear, it complicated things. And the doctors at one point told my parents that it would be difficult or at least a hard road ahead for me to begin to speak properly again. 
or at least that's what they told me when I went into speech pathology in school, that I had to work very hard at this. I remember going home and having my parents, especially my mother, tell me over and over and over again, enunciate, enunciate, enunciate. <laughs> like, I am, I am, I am, leave me alone. <laughs> but the problem was, and it became kind of obvious, I think, over the years, it wasn't as if I was in one speech pathology program or working with one therapist over the course of a year or two. Because we changed schools so often that every time I got to a new school, I started with a new speech therapist. The fear was that I would never really overgrow, overcome or outgrow my impediment. And in some cases, people had written me off rather quickly. I mention that because, in some ways, we hear in the readings today to not kind of pigeonhole people into the expected, but to allow the grace of God to work within them to become the unexpected. We see this with Ezekiel and with Paul, who become a prophet on the one hand and a disciple of the Lord on the other. And even with Jesus, as he begins his public ministry and the expectations of those who know him are that he cannot do the things he says he can do. And yet he can. By the grace of God and by a really good, I think, slew of therapists and my mother constantly telling me to enunciate, <laughs> not only would I gain my speech back rather quickly, but I'd also adapt to the hearing loss that I was having throughout my early years. One doctor had told my parents that it might be difficult for me to even get anything of any substance, in my speech at least, for at least 10 years, which was a crazy kind of thing to say because it usually doesn't take that long for anybody. And I don't know if it was because of my mother <laughs> or because of the grace of God, but I was determined to outdo all of them. When I graduated from high school, I did so on the debate team. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and the, the kicker for me was that the only category that I competed in was extemporaneous speaking, which if you had known me as a child would have been the last thing you'd imagine because my childhood was mostly silent. I was so self-conscious about the way that I pronounced words that I decided not to speak for years. I mean, I spoke when spoken to, which Sister Kathy thinks was a good idea I should bring back. <laughs> But I didn't speak that much. I retreated mostly into my books, into my reading, into the silence of my own head. But by the time I got to high school, something had switched on. I became the unexpected. If you would ask me when I was, say, six or seven, when all this was going on, if I had one day become a preacher, in the order of preachers, I would have laughed at you. Because the last thing I expected then was to be able to speak in front of anybody. But God does things with us that we cannot anticipate. When we open ourselves up to the grace of God, we become the very things that God intends for us to be. Paul says it quite elaborately and eloquently, that the very things that we think are weaknesses can become something different. He says, I am content with weaknesses, with insults and hardships, persecutions and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It's when we allow the weaknesses of our lives to in fact become moments of grace that God shows us where our real strengths lie. The people of Jesus' own time could not imagine him as a prophet could not imagine him as the one who was sent by God. And yet, he would prove them wrong. Not simply by his own deeds, but by the grace of God working in and through him, by the spirit of the Lord that was dwelling upon him. Even the gospel acclamation that we proclaim today 
reiterates that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Each one of us in our own lives is sent to proclaim that message. That the Spirit of the Lord is upon each one of us to take us to the unexpected, to the unanticipated, and to become something more than we think we are. When I was in first grade, they told me I had difficulty speaking. <coughs> By second grade, they told me it would take me a while or years to get over it. By the time I graduated from high school, I graduated as the valedictorian. I don't say that to boast or to pump up my own chest, but to say that anything is possible if we open ourselves up to the grace of God. What does God have in store for you today? What are your weaknesses that you think might kind of make you struggle throughout the rest of your lives? Because they are not weaknesses at all in the face of God. When I am weak, it is then that I am strong. Stand now and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God. Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, and light of light, true God of true God, begotten God of God, made the constitution of the Father, through all things made, for our sin and for our soul.
God my Father, number seven, three, six, and <laughs>
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have a few announcements. Registration forms for the August uh, Money Calendar Raffle, sponsored by St. Louis de France Parish, are found at the doors of the church. Completed forms may be sent to the parish office or dropped into the collection basket. Packets for the parish assessment project outlined in today's bulletin are found in the baskets of the doors of the church. Any assistance you can give is greatly appreciated. And on behalf of the entire parish faculty, I almost said faculty, on the parish staff, it's a PC thing, uh, we wanted to extend to all of you a happy 4th of July. It looks like the rain may stop. <laughs> But at least have an enjoyable day with friends and family and with loved ones. Be safe, please, if you're using fireworks. Uh, but celebrate this day uh, knowing that we have been able to come together. If you're in a crowded space inside, you need a mask, put the mask on. <laughs> he said, <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. The reception number 735 in the hymn. America the Beautiful, number 735 in the hymn.